Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. Subscribe to this series to explore the enigmas of our distant ancestors with me and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. In this video, we will be examining the small anomaly in the north shaft of the Queen's Chamber that's become known as Sibson's Window. It is a small indentation in the wall of the shaft, just beyond the first bend about 75 feet inside. It is about 5 inches long and about 2 inches tall on the side closest to the camera, and 3 inches on the other. We cannot see clearly how deep it is. There appears to be a small rubble pile in the shaft below this point. Directly in front of the window, the debris appears to have been pushed aside and the floor has been smoothed and lowered. There are broken stones all through the pyramid, but this is not how debris would distribute if it was a simple stress fracture. It would be randomly scattered next to it, not cleared off to one side. It was first noticed in 2021 by YouTuber Matt Simpson, for which it's been colloquially named. You may know him better as Ancient Architects. He is also to be credited with many of the images I will be showing you, so you'll see his logo a lot in the lower corner. In his video, he hypothesized that it may have been dug from the outside, based on the direction the rubble appears to have been pushed and the fact that there are a few modern items mixed in with it, items that one would be hard-pressed to explain how they got there from the Queen's Chamber. Remember, the Queen's Chamber shafts do not exit the pyramid like the kings do. They are closed off by small doors, behind which still is several meters of stone. The only known way into the shaft is through the Queen's Chamber. Let's look at the modern items. The long metal poles you see in the images were exploratory probes left by Morton Egger over nine explorations in the 1920s. So while they may have shoved some debris around, they could not have pushed up the more modern materials. First is a small plastic spool, which is a complete mystery. It did not come off of any of the robots that were sanctioned to explore the shaft, and it is certainly modern. The spool is hard to explain. It appears to be plastic and round. How could it get up 75 feet and around the bend? Stefan Bergdahl hypothesized in his 2021 paper, Secrets of the Small Shafts of the Pyramid of Cheops, that these may have been fasteners used by Morton Edgar to couple wooden balls to the end of his poles. However, Edgar himself documents everything he lost up there and does not mention it. Furthermore, the wooden balls are still clearly attached to said poles, though there were more. The second item was a blank piece of paper. We aren't really sure when or where this came from either. This particular item could theoretically be over a hundred years old and been pushed up the shaft by Edgar. However, that's not the case for this item, a ticket to the pyramid which has been confidently dated to the mid-1970s. Paper objects get in strange places all the time, but there's no wind in the pyramid, no animals to drag things around. You can't throw a piece of paper 75 feet uphill and around a bend. These are compelling arguments that these items may have actually come through the small hole, so let's look closer at it. The space appears to be trapezoidal and appears to have straight edges. Something we must keep in mind while looking at these images is that it's difficult to keep a sense of scale. Remember, the entire shaft is a mere five inches across, making this window about the size of an iPhone. Based on the amount of debris we see in the shaft leading up to it, and the fact that there is no debris above it, it's a fair assumption that this hole is the source of all of it. It was not an original feature, and somehow was excavated after the shaft was built, sending all the debris down the shaft. If I understand Ancient Architect correctly, he proposes that the modern rubbish entered the shaft through this window as well. So we need to determine exactly where this window is. It is located between the two bends. It's thought the reason the shafts bend here in the first place is to avoid the Grand Gallery. The first bend is to get it around the Grand Gallery, and the second bend is just corrects the course back towards north. This places the window's location somewhere near the top of the Grand Gallery about halfway through it. The Grand Gallery could not be where the hole was cut or modern debris came from. They pass relatively close to each other, but are still several feet of stone away. I've searched the walls of the Grand Gallery and see no cracks or holes that paper could get through. People have wondered if there's a small space between the Grand Gallery and the shafts because it swings so far out this way. Even if the shaft had gone perfectly straight, it still would not have intersected the Grand Gallery, so why bend so far around it? The King's Chamber North Shaft also gives the Grand Gallery a much wider berth than you'd expect, 
So perhaps there is a small lost chamber here, connected to the shaft through the window, but there's a major problem with that. The plastic spool and the blank paper, we really don't know where they came from, but the ticket? That must have come from a tourist. Therefore, it must have come from somewhere a tourist could go. Even if there is a hidden chamber there, which there is no evidence for, that still doesn't really explain anything. You still end up with the same question of how it got there. Here is my proposal for the modern material in the debris pile. To the Egyptian authorities, the pyramids are first and foremost tourist attractions. Not only is it trivial to book private time inside the structure, for the cost of a few tens of thousands and the right connections, you can even get keys to lock sections. Other YouTubers have disparagingly called this bribing the right people, but that's not the case. These are legitimate channels through the Ministry of Antiquities. Here is a website you can book private time, and here's a man I met who was nice enough to share with me a picture of him literally unlocking the Queen's Chamber door. A few years ago, during one of these private bookings, a group of Germans covertly and illegally scraped paint from the King's relieving chamber. This guy climbed up the side under the cover of darkness. There are very few guards, they're all outside, and tourists are famous for just plain doing stupid stuff. Not everyone has the same respect for the monuments that I hope my viewers do. I propose that at some point between 1970 and 1990, based on the ticket stub, someone booked private time inside the Great Pyramid, smuggled a pole inside, and shoved it up the air shaft, pushing whatever garbage had gathered in the bottom up towards the hole where the debris snagged it. All of the materials came from the lower part of the shaft, not the window. So what about the window itself? I introduced my videos saying we'll come to tentative conclusions, but in this case I'm pretty sure I've solved it. I proposed the creation of this window was done by winter. Not just any winter, but a particularly brutal one that happened during the construction of the pyramid. I'll tell you my theory first, then we'll look at the evidence in the stone. During winter, 4,500 years ago, there was either a big snowstorm or a series of snowstorms. They are extremely rare in Egypt, but they do happen. Here's a picture from Egypt from December 12, 2013. Here's another one from the same day actually in front of the pyramid. But this ancient storm happened before the pyramid was finished, probably about the time the Great Void was being built, and it was just an open pit on top of a huge flat platform where snow could accumulate covering the top of the pyramid in several inches of it. Now the pyramid itself, being a giant pile of stone, retains heat very well, and internal stones would continue to pump out heat all night, never getting below freezing, melting small amounts of snow. This allowed liquid water to trickle its way through the pyramid, and I proposed a most convenient path happened to go right between these two blocks. Now, like I said, the masonry would stay warm all night, but any stone exposed to air, like those in the shaft, would probably freeze, so ice formed here. Ice is very destructive. Ask anyone who lives in higher latitudes. It's why old house foundations look like this each spring, and why Pennsylvania roads look like this. Water froze between the blocks, creating enough pressure to cause the block to break. Then it thawed, new water got in the new cracks, and the next night it froze again, completely destroying the integrity and causing it to crumble as the freeze-thaw cycle continued over several nights, the exact same process that creates potholes in roads. Ancient Architect says this window's edges are straight, implying cut or chiseled, but they aren't. There's even a very obvious chip right here. It was not the hands of man that pushed the debris to the side, but instead a small flow of water. Notice how the first bits of debris that we see, the ones furthest from the window, are the lightest ones. These are barely a few millimeters across and probably only weigh a few grams. Just beyond that, we see the largest pieces of debris. Then you get a mix of tiny and medium pieces leading up to the door, and then more tiny specks beyond it. When the break first happened, the largest pieces would have simply tumbled down the slant, which is why they are so far from it. Water flowed out of the window and pushed the lightest materials into a bank denoting the high water mark, and also pushed the rest of the materials down towards the queen's chamber. The lighter the pieces, the further they'd be carried. Look here at this picture of Beatty Creek. The larger rocks don't move much, but water, mud, and ice can freely grab tiny pebbles and has deposited them along the shore. We can also spot a strange whitish discoloration on the ground here. I see things that look like this every winter. Here's a bridge that shows a similar discoloration. On the bridge, that stain is caused by road salt, which shows a high water mark of meltwater. 
Now, salt residue is all over the pyramid, and in particular the Queen's Chamber. It was once covered in a layer of it, almost an inch thick, as was the Grand Gallery. Here are several other locations further up the shaft that all show obvious signs of damage from salt crystal growth. We cannot be sure that this residue is salt, as there is another possibility. Look at the stains that almost look like they're dripping down the chevrons in this old picture of the entrance to the pyramid. These are bathtubs that have seen their fair share of hard water. Hard water can have a variety of minerals in it, but these particular stains are from limescale. The Great Pyramid is millions of pounds of limestone, which dissolves and leaves streaks. The old chevron stains were probably limescale, and the residue stains in the shaft could be either salt or limescale or both. Fire was the only source of light for the ancients inside the pyramid, making a carbon dioxide rich area. Moisture, carbon dioxide, and smoke will produce carbonic acid, which is the main thing that dissolves limestone into limescale. It's very destructive to limestone, and its flow created the pitting and smoothing we see here. So that's my explanation of Simpson's window and the pile of debris leading up to it. Snow fell on the pyramid, and some meltwater trickled down to this location where it contacted the air and froze, breaking the soft limestone. The big spring thaw created a heavy flow, which pushed all of the debris to one side, then a continuous trickle flowed occasionally as the pyramid was finished, which left residue stains. We can follow the path of both a heavy and low flow all the way down to the bottom of the debris pile, where it then disappears under a deep crack in the floor joint. A mundane explanation for a minor anomaly, but that is not to dismiss it as unimportant. Citizen scientists like Mr. Sipson can push forward small mysteries that would not be worth the time to publish an academic paper on, and put it in front of thousands of people. The hive mind of the internet can draw from its collective experience one or two people may have the precise overlap in knowledge to put ancient mysteries to bed. I'm not sure how many Egyptologists are familiar with the formation and expansion of Pennsylvania potholes, but that's the obscure piece of knowledge that led me to the conclusion of ICE. Thank you for watching. Respectfully discuss my ideas in the comments or post your own, and subscribe to join me in exploring our distant ancestors.